Hot melt is a modified bitumen which is heated and then combined with a polyester fleece and protection sheet to form a weatherproof layer. Hot melt liquid waterproofing is specifically used on inverted roofs, which means it's typically used on commercial buildings, green roofs and balconies. Hot melt has a 100% bond to the roof, so water can't track across a roof. Is monolithic, so no seals can fail. And is quick and easy to apply. Although there are many advantages to using liquid waterproofing, it's important to be aware of the differences in application on site. These include the application temperature, which may affect curing rates, so refer to manufacturer guidelines. The amount of substrate preparation to guarantee a full bond, with a primer possibly being needed. The requirements to complete a cosh assessment, such as PPE, handling requirements and unfamiliar smells, which should be checked by referring to the manufacturer's material safety data sheet and the disposal of used packaging, with manufacturers consulted for their recommendations on recycling and disposal. In terms of PPE, you need to wear gloves, safety glasses, a long-sleeved shirt and all other safety equipment relevant to the site where you're working. The tools required include flat-bladed squeegee, hardboard spreaders, brush, trowel, knife, scissors, polyester fleece reinforcement and a mineral felt. Heating modified bitumen also requires a gas-powered air-jacketed melter with calibrated thermostat, which should be located on a flat, well-ventilated area close to where you're working. Remove all packaging before placing the blocks into the melter, which is constantly mixed by an agitator. Once the membrane reaches the correct temperature, it is then discharged into a steel bucket ready for pouring onto the substrate. Before starting work each day, you need to carry out a bond test to ensure the concrete or plywood substrate that you're covering is clean, dry and dust-free. To do this, pour a small amount of membrane and apply a 300mm square section of protection layer and leave it to cool. Cut a triangle in the surface and pull the protection sheet. In doing so, checking there is a full bond. To reactivate the membrane from the test, you can use a blowtorch to reheat it and absorb it into the roofing system. As with all liquid systems, seal any horizontal joints where applicable and then apply the details. Pour membrane along the face and use a spreader to carry out three passes where the membrane is spread up the face three times. This technique ensures a 3mm thick coating before it cools. Place the fleece into the membrane and remove any air contained within it, and carry this out to all upstands. The length of upstand you should apply in one go will be dependent on the number of people you have on the job, but don't try and fix too long a length at any time. On details that may flex, you should apply uncured neoprene reinforcement around details which allows for minor movement and which is fixed in the same way as the fleece reinforcement. If there are single or multiple pipe penetrations through a roof, you can create a pitch pocket around them. To do this, you need to form and seal a small bund around the penetrations into which you pour hot membrane up to half height, which floods the area around the penetrations. Once this cools, top it up with another layer of membrane, which provides a complete seal. With the upstands and details complete, cut the fleece reinforcement to suit the bay size on the main roof and apply the hot melt membrane. Use the squeegee to level it using the same three-pass system that you used on the upstands, and overlap the strokes to prevent forming ridges.
Place the reinforcement onto the surface, ensuring it is clear of the upstand whilst pulling the surface taut. And then brush it into the membrane and remove any pockets of air. Continue to do this for three rolls, providing a 75mm lap in the reinforcement on each bay, and then return and complete the protection layer. ensuring you seal each of the overlaps to prevent them becoming a trip hazard. The roof is now waterproof and protected. Where applicable, fix a termination bar along the top of all upstands to provide a comprehensive seal. To check the overall thickness of the system, use a hot melt depth gauge. Place it on the finished surface and press the needle so that it penetrates through the full system, which will self-seal upon removal. This identifies the total nominal thickness of the waterproofing and the protection, which in this example is 8mm. Carry out an electronic leak detection test across the whole roof before applying the final surface finish. Finally, place the interlocking insulation on the waterproofing. Cover this with a separator sheet and position the paving slab supports and the paving slabs on top of this, which may need cutting to size around the perimeter, or use rounded stone at the edges.